Hey folks and welcome back to the channel. So we've got a lot of people that are talking about the SEC versus Binance situation that is beginning to start to really play itself out because this has been brewing in the background for a couple of months, the first press release of this and the best place to go for anything to do with the SEC to see if it's real and see the real information behind it is to actually go to their website, which is sec.gov. Really simple to remember. I'll leave a link to it in the description and I'll leave a link to this also in the description for you. So before we get any further into this, if you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing. That small thing helps the channel. Drop a comment at the end, drop a little like on the way out. We really appreciate it. So getting on with this, I've highlighted a lot of stuff because, you know, before we get into this, ultimately, what do we need to ask ourselves? Well, what's the end result of charges like this that are being brought forward what's what's the end result well it's likely just going to be a lot of fines if you look at SBF for example he got such a light slap on the wrist from the SEC because he played ball he didn't fight it he just accepted it for what it was he knew what he did wrong if Binance choose to fight this you know what changes well nothing you still can't buy stuff in the US and there's still all these different ins and outs and you know ultimately the SEC, which is led by Gary Gensler, is a bull in a china shop. I'm also going to leave a link um, at the end, a thumbnail to the uh, Operation Choke Point special video that we did. I think that's a good point to note because there's people inside the United States that feel that the SEC are a raging bull in a china shop and they're causing more damage by doing what they're doing instead of actually trying to, like I always say, meet at the middle ground with these things. So like I said, I've highlighted some things. Let's just go through it. So the Securities and Exchange Commission today charged Binance Holdings, which operates the largest crypto asset trading platform in the world, Binance.com. The US-based affiliate BAM Trading Services, which is BAM Trading, which together with Binance operates the crypto asset trading platform Binance US and their founder, Zhao Zhao Peng, uh, Zhao, which a variety, I'm sorry if I butchered uh, that pronunciation with a variety of securities and law violations. Among other things, the SEC alleges that while Zhao and Binance publicly claimed that the US customers were restricted from transaction, transacting on Binance, Zhao and Binance in reality subverted their own controls to secretly allow high value US customers to continue trading on Binance platform. Further, the SEC alleges that while Zhao and Binance publicly claimed that the Binance US was created as a separate, independent trading platform for US investors, Zhao and Binance secretly controlled the Binance US platform operations behind the scenes. So this is really interesting because they're all there are charges being brought forward, but ultimately it's still in like that claim stage. This is all just smart wording and, and, and the way you word things can be very manip, manip, manipulative. So the SEC also alleges that Zhao and Binance exercise control of the platform's customers' assets, permitting them to commingle customer assets and divert customer assets as they please, including to an entity Zhao-owned and controlled Sigma change. Now, we can't ignore the absolute obvious here. We've seen them move the bulk of the 4 trillion coins a few times. So that means that, yes, they have done stuff like this before. But ultimately, if you actually dive into it and look for what it is and not just look at the numbers behind the screen, they were creating a whitelisting system to avoid the burn tax on LUNC. So, yes, they may have, you know, diverted assets in certain situations. But ultimately, you know, if this does go to a court battle... You know, these kind of things, it, this is what's going to be on the defense, stuff like this. And, you know, there's a lot of stuff in here that I've highlighted, but there's something I find really funny. And it's just like a lot of this is based on messages, apparent messages. The Binance chief compliance officer messaged a colleague that we are operating as a fucking unlicensed exchange securities exchange in the USA, bro. Like, come on. Realistically. This is all, when I took a deeper dive into it, it's all just like based on hearsay, numbers behind a screen, instead of them actually going to Binance and going, look, we're looking into this, you know, what's this all about? Binance have always complied more or less with everything that they've been asked to do. Yes, they're secretive, but you know, what exchanges aren't? You don't create the world's best burger and then go and tell every other burger restaurant what you put in your burger 
meat or or your sauces, whatever gives you that edge. You're not you're not going to go off and say that. So ultimately, what I believe this is going to come down to bite or crunch is not likely going to be a court case. I think it will just you know it'll either be finance go well, it's this that and the other. We'll pay what fines we need to pay. The likelihood of this going into a court case, I don't think is high unless Binance really has a serious situation playing out here. But if you go back and you listen to Operation Choke Point, right, the reason why the SEC are doing this is to simply slow down the growth of crypto. They did this in a time when they performed Operation Choke Point, and that is now being played out again. And ultimately, want, what the SEC rely on is the reaction from the crypto community. If everybody just didn't react to this and actually looked into it for what it is, nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. We can look at other contenders in the crypto space, in the crypto community, in the cryptoverse, however you want to refer to it. And we just look at people like SBF, right? We look at people like Do Kwon, these lot are completely out of their jurisdiction ultimately if it if it ever did come down to anything silly or they actually did things wrong ultimately it all comes down to jurisdiction and all of these different things do Kwan's being bailed from a montenegrin jail and where he's heading next who knows but i can tell you something he's not heading to the s uh, to the united states or wherever wherever the sec can get extradition i can tell you that much because like I was saying, ultimately, bite to crunch, all of this stuff really does come down to the laws, where you're operating, how you're operating, and, and different things like that. A lot of this is claim-based, and yes, charges are being brought forward, but we've known this for way over a month. You know, we covered this a month ago. You can go back, you can look at the videos. I don't think this is anything for us to freak out about. Why? Because, well, ultimately, if... Binance did, for whatever reason, get shut down and everything like that got shut down, okay? All that does is open up a huge gap in the market for another exchange to appear. This is something you can't stop. It's like kind of like weeds in the wild. You can pull as many as you want, but they're just going to continue to keep growing. It's, And that's not to say cryptocurrency is a weed and exchanges are a weed, but we've got, you know, DEXs as well, which are like hugely underrated because... You know, a lot of them are confusing. There's not really a decent one out there, but there are ones out there. They work. They do what they're supposed to do. They're just a little bit more complicated than what the average user in crypto realistically can deal with. A lot of people get put off with these professional modes, and that's why you see the light modes on all of these different kind of crypto apps. But like I was saying, it's not going to stop crypto. It's not going to stop people investing. It's not going to... The SEC can't go around and get every single person who's involved in crypto in America, in, you know, extradite them to America and then charge everybody. It's impossible for them to do that. Crypto is peer-to-peer for a reason. That means it's you to another person. Obviously, if you're using it in an exchange, that's a little bit different. There's an exchange, not really in the middle, but, you know... Self-custodial wallets, the idea behind crypto is that it's peer-to-peer, person-to-person. So guess what? The idea, if you take a deeper look into it, is to not be affected by these outer silly little things, which are just, these people are professionals at what they do. This is why they're in the positions that they're in. They understand the law. They understand the word and they understand tactics to create choke points. It's as simple as that. And what you're going to see is, over time when they can figure out how to adopt it the best way to adopt it and how to control it then all of a sudden the tables turn They're like you know crypto is the best thing ever we want to get rid of cash we're going to go completely cashless everybody needs to have the digital united states dollar it's for them right it's the perfect form of control honestly but they need to figure out how to do it correctly because if you think about it if you just got rid of cash as a whole you just had these kind of digital currencies you would mess up a lot of stuff to do with like narcotics and anything that deals with cash and deals with like laundering money the whole idea with laundering money is to take cash and 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 make it clean it's it's so hard for people to do that in crypto there's always a trail and it's 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 very interesting like i said go back watch some of the content we've produced here on the channel 
I think you'll find it really interesting, especially the Operation Choke Point video. It's it's a lot to absorb, but it really puts you in a position where you can start to understand why they're doing what they're doing. Because a lot of people just sit there and like, you know, oh, it's all dumping again. It's doing this, that and the other. But ultimately, they expect us to react. Folks, that's all I've got for you this morning. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got some good information from it. Really taking a dive into what this is for what it is and for how it is. Drop a comment, drop a like, drop a subscription on the way out. I hope I've earned it by now. Have a really nice day. None of this is financial advice. Beware of scammers. Beware of doppelgangers. Beware of anybody who pretends to be. Stay safe, stay humble, stay aware. And we'll catch you in the next one as always. Shoo!